SCP-135. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-135 is to be contained in a partitioned plexiglass chamber at least 7 metres to a side. All sections are to be completely sealed off from one another to avoid cross-contamination. SCP-135 itself is to be in a central section with 1.0 to 1.5 square metres of the floor space, with a 5 centimetre wide runoff trench around the perimeter that drains into a tank, the contents of which are to be piped into an incinerator at the end of every week. The remaining space in the containment chamber is to be used to house five chemical harvesting vats, one vat per partition section. A single access corridor is to lead from SCP-135 section to outside the chamber. No personnel are permitted within SCP-135's effect radius. All maintenance, taking of samples, etc. are to be carried out by remote control robots. Disciplinary measures need not be taken against personnel that violate this rule, because the direct consequence of SCP-135's effects have been deemed consequence enough. Robots are to be maintained and cleaned by level 1 personnel. Once a week, SCP-135 section is to be hosed down with solution U82B, until only it is out coating is visible. In emergencies, flamethrowers may be employed to reduce mass quickly. Due to the potential of catastrophic effects in the event of cross-contamination, at no point are SCP-329 or SCP-427 to be contained within the same facility as SCP-135. Description SCP-135 is a human female between 9 and 14 years of age that promotes rapid, uncontrolled cell growth within a radius of 2.25 meters from itself. It remains rigidly in the fetal position and has never been observed to move. SCP-135's effect is cargogenic to animal tissue and induces malignant neoplasia in plant and fungal tissues in 100% of recorded exposure cases, with severity and disorganization increasing exponentially with closer proximity to SCP-135. Within 0.1 meter, cells will not die, even under conditions where they would normally, causing SCP-135 to be steadily buried under a continually growth mass of plant matter, fungal matter and microorganisms. This undying state extends to SCP-135 cells as well. SCP-135 has been shown to lack an epidermis, instead having a crust of mixed plant and fungal matter that has incorporated itself into SCP-135's skin, interspersed with tumours and patches of raw dermis. SCP-135's lungs, diaphragm and intestines are ruptured, and growth extends into the chest and abdominal cavities. It has been fitted with wide diameter plastic tubes or use in draining excess biomatter. The Foundation came into possession of SCP-135 after, after it and a surrounding ball of growth rolled off a cliff in the Himalayan mountains, crushing a hike on the trail below. Class B anaesthetics were administered to the civilians and law enforcement personnel involved, and the incident was covered up as a as having been caused by a pair of male goats that slipped and fell off the cliff edge during a dominance battle. Later examination of the growth revealed the partial skeleton of an adult human female with ostracocotoma covering 50% of it. SCP-135 was found in the space between the skeleton's ribcage and pelvis at the time between 7 and 8 years old. A viable DNA sample has recovered was recovered from the bone marrow of the pelvis and testing confirmed with 98.5 certainty that the skeleton belonged to SCP-135's biological mother. All personnel involved with SCP-135's retrieval and initial testing were later diagnosed with various forms of cancer. Out of the 50 affected, only 5 are still alive at the time of this writing. Attempts to terminate SCP-135 with sustained gunfire, flamethrowers, caustic materials, vacuum and extreme pressure have all failed. Further termination attempts are forbidden by order of the O5, due to SCP-135's potential uses in cultivating useful bacteria. See document 135A for information on the current contents of partitioned vats. 
EEGs confirm full brain activity. No attempts to communicate with SCP-135 are to be made at this time.